Hi, I'm Scott Snedden from Juniper Networks. I work on a team that talks to customers about their cloud adoption and cloud evolution. You know, we like to discuss with them their network architectures and their security policies and the tools that they're using to build networks. But really what we're trying to do is help IT teams add value to the business, not just be a cost center, not just be something that's trying to keep up with this disruption that's happening in their businesses. So at Juniper Networks, we're all about simplification and trying to make life easier for network engineers and security architects and, and people like that. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about a simplified path to multi-cloud today. CIOs have a lot to keep up with. There's a constantly evolving environment that they're having to manage. Um, we've got mobile workers, we've got new security threats, we've got a changing application landscape, developers are building microservices-based applications, they're trying to figure out how to adapt to multiple cloud environments, public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, all of the above. And so we believe, and this might be strange to hear from a networking company, but the future is not about networks, the future is about networking. And what do we mean by that? Well, networks are about the box. They're about the devices, protocols, they're about the features on that box. Networking is really about the people, about the workflows, it's about agility, it's about driving value to the business. In most enterprise IT shops, the network is a cost center. It's something that's in the way of innovation a lot of times. We really wanna help those networks contribute to the business and really be an enabler for innovation. So are you ready for this? I mean, you know, the CIO, like I mentioned, has a lot to deal with. We've got digital disruption happening, the uberfication of every business that's out there, a new competitive landscape. Um, you've got bad guys. You've got the security challenges that are ever present and becoming more and more dangerous all the time. And then as these workloads start to uh, spread into multiple clouds, that becomes even more difficult to manage. There's a tsunami of technology coming at CIOs all the time. Their board or their CEOs are saying, are we taking advantage of distributed computing? What about edge computing? What about serverless? I mean, all of these buzzwords that keep coming at you all the time. And cloud in all of its forms. I mentioned hybrid, I mentioned multi, I mentioned private and public. You know, this whole thing is really requiring a new approach to how we build things and how we operate things. It's all about networking. The reality is CIOs just can't keep up. It's just too much. The reason they can't keep up is they're managing an ever more complex environment. Every enterprise has some legacy stuff that keeps the lights on. They might have virtualized their data center, but they've probably still got a mainframe off in the corner that they're having to operate. Each of these application silos presents a different network architecture, some different security requirements, as IT departments evolve to public cloud, again, that's another architecture, another security policy framework, another operational practice that they have to adapt to. That complexity is just holding everything back. Complexity is really the enemy of agility. It is really the anchor that's keeping things from moving forward. So we at Juniper are all about engineering simplicity. We're all about driving simplification into network architectures and simplifying the processes that people use to keep things running. So as we think about engineering simplicity and how this applies to the cloud, we've come up with these four terms that really kind of run to the acronym of SURF. Um, so just remember SURF, and, and this should kind of drive you back to these, these four principles or ideas that we think of that are really required to engineer simplicity into your cloud environments. Now, first and foremost, and this has to be pervasive, this is security. Security is key, and security is even more challenging in a multi-cloud world. And so I'll come back to some solutions for that in, a little bit later. Ubiquity is key as I think about my cloud architectures. Ubiquity is this idea of having an application available to any user, any place, and being allowed to deploy that application on any cloud regardless of platform. You know, traditionally, the network and the security policy prevent those applications from being deployed everywhere they need to be. And so what we're really driving towards is just getting the network out of the way so that your infrastructure can be more ubiquitous. Reliability is also important. In the networking space, we're good at designing reliability in. We can use network protocols and boxes and infrastructure to make sure the infrastructure is reliable. 
in your private data center. But as I go to a public cloud, I may not have those same characteristics that I can manage as an IT ad administrator. And so we really have to think about reliability from a different approach. That means visibility. That means using tools and analytics to understand what's happening in the environment. It also means automating. And we all know that a lot of outages are caused by human error and manual processes that fail. But if we automate things, we can eliminate a lot of those manual failures and those manual mistakes that always occur. So driving automation into my processes will certainly impact the reliability of my services. And then lastly, and this is kind of the cloud dream, is this idea of fungibility or the idea of reusability. Now that was the initial goal of virtualizing, is that I come up with a somewhat standard set of server infrastructure that I can reuse for multiple applications. Well, what we're advocating is that the entire infrastructure become more fungible. So let's design an architecture that is reusable by any kind of application, again, so the network just gets out of the way. All roads lead to multi-cloud. And so, you know, this is something to keep in mind as you start to look towards your cloud evolution as well. And by multi-cloud, I really just mean N plus one. You know, everybody's got some virtualized thing in their private data center. And as I mentioned before, they've probably got some legacy application that might not be virtualized. You know, they might have a database running on an old Unix server. They might still have mainframes, which I do hear about quite a bit. And so, you know, that's multi-cloud. Hybrid cloud is multi-cloud. You're using more than one. You've got some private cloud infrastructure and you're trying to leverage one of these public cloud providers. There are a lot of reasons for this. There's a lot of reasons why people go down this path. Application architectures usually dictate multi-cloud. I might be leveraging some sort of big data processing application that exists in one public cloud, and I might be running some of my back office applications that are better suited for another public cloud. That leads down the path of multi-cloud. Economics are certainly a big driver for multi-cloud. Sometimes one public cloud provider is cheaper than another. Or oftentimes, if I've got a lot of data to manage and store, it might be cheaper to keep that stuff in my private data center. And those strategies always lead to multi-cloud. And then lastly, data security, data sovereignty, data location, all of these things are very important considerations when deciding on a cloud strategy. You know, if I've got to keep something in country, I might need to put that in a private cloud. But if it's something that I can place in various countries and take advantage of the distributed nature of some public cloud footprint, then you might want to leverage that. But data security and data location, it matters. And so that certainly drives a multi-cloud strategy. So the net of this is all roads lead to multi-cloud. But this presents some real challenges. Operating that multi-cloud is difficult. Not only do I have different orchestration platforms for my application environments, I've got different network architectures, different security policy frameworks. We really think that you should consider your end-to-end -end architectures as you go down this multi-cloud path. So that means you've got to consider your branch office connectivity into these solutions as well. And so, you know, operating as a multi-cloud is hard. Managing security policy is incredibly complicated. Network architectures can sometimes limit your ability to take full advantage of these things. So what I'm going to go through next are a few ways that we at Juniper are addressing this. The first thing that we want to talk about is connecting to those public clouds and connecting within your private clouds and also connecting off to those branch offices. There are a lot of ways to solve these problems. There are switches and routers and virtual routers and, you know, uh, white box and, and uh, merchant silicone and all kinds of tools to achieve connectivity. Our commitment at Juniper is that we'll approach those connectivity problems without religion. A lot of network vendors will say, you have to buy our box with our silicone because that's the only way to achieve the connectivity that you want. Our commitment is that we're going to deliver a consistent set of features, a consistent set of operational practices, a consistent set of tools across all of the hardware platforms that we support. If you need lots and lots of 100 gig, we've got a box for that. And it's the best box in the business for that purpose. In some cases, in a lot of cases for data center switching, merchant silicone is the way to go. Economically, it just makes sense. And then in a lot of cases, running a network function on x86, virtualizing a firewall and running it on a hypervisor, 
That might be the right application for the job. It might be the right footprint for that point in the network. And so we are going to deliver features and solutions, leveraging Junos, leveraging Contrail and our SDN and orchestration layer that are consistent across all of these hardware platforms. So the decision as to which box you use or which platform you use is an economic decision and not a feature and function decision. The second element that needs to really be considered and talked about is orchestration. We've all seen people automating network functions. That has certainly made some improvements in how people are operating networks. We've seen a lot of efficiency and reliability improvements and things like that as we automate. But we need to take that to the next level and talk about orchestrating. So not just automating the provisioning of a switch, but orchestrating the connectivity and the security policy end to end as you start to deploy services into public clouds. And so we're committed to bring to market solutions that allow you to orchestrate your connectivity, your fabric management, your security policy from your private data center to your branch and to your public cloud for presence. Key to all of this is visibility. And so the next thing to consider is how I see my environment and what I can do with the information that I collect from that environment. And so we're committed to features and solutions built around our AppFormix platform that let us collect analytics and data from the environment, server performance, network telemetry, utilization, uh, workload um, placement, and uh, even accounting and billback type data. We bring that all into a very high-end, very intelligent analytics platform that gives you end-to-end -end visibility and troubleshooting and understanding of what's happening in the environment. And then from there, we can take the tooling in AppFormix and start to build some event-based automation. So we get into this mode of self-driving networks. And so visibility and analytics and then using that data are very key in this multi-cloud world. And then lastly, and most importantly, is security. And so what we're bringing to market around control security is a new way to approach security. And so I mentioned early on that the existing approaches to security probably aren't enough. And then managing those things is becoming more and more challenging. In the old world of securing net networks, securing data centers, I would build a perimeter around all my stuff. And so an analogy I like to use is this idea of a castle with a moat. So I might secure my workload by digging a moat around the castle and keeping all the bad guys out. But if a bad guy were able to breach that moat, they're in the castle and they can wreak havoc. And I don't really have another layer of security inside. What we're advocating for is a more micro-segmented approach where I may still have that perimeter security, but I have security throughout, much like a hotel. Now think of a hotel and the security model that might exist there. I might have to scan a key card to get in the elevator. After I pass through the doorman and security guard that's, that's maybe manning the front door, I've got to scan that key card again once I get up the elevator and to my room. And then when I'm in that room, there's probably a safe where I put my valuables and my passport. Multiple layers of security as I move throughout the environment. The challenge with doing that in these uh, cloud environments is that each layer probably has a different policy framework and a different policy language. So it becomes even more challenging to manage my security policy in this environment. You know, AWS and Azure and Google all have really powerful tools native to their clouds, but none of them are the same. And they're certainly not the same as the firewall that you're using in your private data center. So what we're bringing with Contrail Security is a policy framework that lets me define security policy in a much more human readable form. And then we will convert that into the machine code that exists on a firewall or on a hypervisor or in a public cloud. The analogy I use there is like a compiler. So if you've ever written code in one of these older programming languages like C, the way that would work is I would write the code in something that was very human readable. And then I would put that code through a compiler that would then translate that code into the machine code to run on a Unix box or different machine code to run on a Windows box or whatever that may be. And so think of that same thing when we talk about intent-based security policy. I write my security policy once in a form that is very human readable, that makes sense, that is using things like allow web to app to database in my development environment in location one. Instead of saying, 
permit 192.168 dot, you know, the kind of machine code that you would design into a firewall rule. So I would design that, that human readable policy once, and then the control control plane will translate that into the specific rules needed to implement that enforcement point and implement that security rule. So I can define a security policy once, it can get impl implemented on a firewall. I design that policy once, and if the requirement is such, it gets implemented at a hypervisor or in a public cloud security group. So these are features that we're introducing with Contrail Security uh, that really make the management of these security policies across clouds much easier. So at Juniper, we have developed this five steps towards a long-term vision around multi-cloud to help our customers down this journey and to really drive conversations. These five steps aren't meant to be prescriptive and they're not specific and, and you know, we're not saying that a customer has to take each step one by one, but rather what we want to do is present a way to explore what's happening in your environment and understand how we might be able to work together to make things simpler. So where we'll start is your existing data center infrastructure possibly. And then maybe we talk about automating that data center infrastructure. We've got a lot of tools within our portfolio to help automate that. The AppFormix stuff I mentioned before is key, but things like our Python toolkits and the APIs that exist on the boxes are very important in looking how to automate. And we can even help you automate your existing environment and work on the practices that you go through to manage your infrastructure every day. From there, we'll start to look at your data center and your cloud environment in more of a multi-domain mode, where we'll look at your public cloud presence, we'll look at your various cloud platforms you might have in your data center. You know, you may be running VMware and you may be running OpenStack, and you might be doing some Kubernetes or something. We can help you start to bring those things together into one cohesive networking platform. This starts to leverage Contrail and SDN and think about virtualizing the network and bringing in overlays and those kinds of things. And also bringing in some of the orchestration tools that we have to help you manage the security policy and the network topology in your public cloud as well. And here we really start to see some improvements in utilization. We can measure faster time to market for new applications. We can measure better utilization of resources in your private cloud data center just by starting down this path. Then we get into this next step where the environment's starting to act more like a dynamic cloud, where your IT as a service starts to become more of a reality. Leveraging again overlays and network virtualization, analytics and things like that, but also starting to present your infrastructure through a self-service portal to your end users. So maybe they can self-provision things and your private environment and even your public environment starts to act like a bit more of a cohesive cloud. Again, some measured success that we can have here is improving your IT staff's efficiency, being able to deliver new services with less time out of your ops people. And uh, you know, it starts to really improve things. And finally, we get to step five, where we get to this nirvana that is the secure and automated multi-cloud. And this is all about orchestrating end-to-end -end this idea of leashed policy or tethered policy, where your network topology definition and your security policy definition is associated with an application. So whenever that application spins up, wherever that application spins up, the security policy and the network topology is deployed automatically to support it. Throughout this life cycle, throughout this process, we look at the people and the processes and the technology that we're using. You know, we can really make some gains by evolving the teams and how they work together, bringing your DevOps teams closer with your network engineering teams and your security ops teams into a thing that we're calling NetSec DevOps or Dev NetSec Ops or some sort of uh, acronym to that effect. But the idea here is that networking and security and DevOps are all at the table and all working together for a common goal. So ultimately, this gets us to this mode where we're lowering cost, we're lowering your operational costs, reduce, reducing risk, giving you higher availability, um, resiliency is stronger, and you're able to deliver services faster. And the key thing here on the slide is you have the ability to place any workload and any application anywhere. The network and the security policy is no longer the inhibitor to deploying applications. It just follows the application and is done automatically. And now the decision as to where you place a workload is a business decision and not necessarily a network architecture uh, 
decision. So thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you out there.